Honestly, you never know what you'll invent or make that could change the world. After all, humans have made some pretty extraordinary things that impact so many those around the world, for the better or for the worst. Hi, my name is Jessa, and please join me as we look together top 10 accidental discoveries that changed history. Number 10, post-it notes. In 1974, a man named Spencer Silver, a chemist at 3M, accidentally created a weak adhesive while attempting to develop a super strong adhesive. This unique adhesive had the property of sticking well to surfaces but could easily be removed without leaving a residue. Initially, Dr. Silver and his team struggled to find a practical application for the seemingly weak adhesive, and it wasn't until 1974 that a colleague of Dr. Silver, Art Fry, found a practical use for the adhesive. These early versions of the post-it notes were initially called pressed and peel. Post-it notes have been become an iconic office and stationery product widely used around the world. The accidentally discovery by Dr. Spencer Silver, combined with the innovative application of Art Fry, resulted in one of the most successful and enduring products of the realm of the office supply world. Number nine, vulcanized rubber. Charles Goodyear accidentally discovered the process of vulcanization in 1839 when he dropped a mixture of rubber and sulfur on a hot stove. The resulting material was more durable, elastic, and resistant. To heat, leading to the development of vulcanized rubber. The process began with natural rubber, which is derived from the latex sap of rubber trees. The raw rubber is usually in the form of soft, sticky, and easily deformable material. After the rubber has been heated and vulcanized, it is cooled to set the cross links. The now vulcanized rubber can be shaped into various forms and retains its elasticity and strength. The discovery of vulcanization by Charles Goodyear in 1839 had a profound impact on the rubber industry. Prior to vulcanization, natural rubber had limitations such as being sensitive to temperature changes and becoming brittle in cold weather. Vulcanization transformed rubber into a more versatile material, making it sustainable for applications ranging from tires and footwear to industrial products. Number 8. Teflon Chemist Roy Plunkett accidentally discovered Teflon while working on a project involving refrigerants. He found that a gas called tetrafolyethylene polymerized into solid white powder, which had a unique non-stick property. Roy Plunkett was experimenting with these gases relating to refrigeration, specifically trying to create a new refrigerant. In one of his experiments, he polymerized tetrafluoroethylene or TFE, a colorless, odorless gas. However, the gas unexpectedly polymerized into a white, waxy solid. This solid material turned out to have a remarkable non-stick property, as Teflon was found in applications in a variety of industries including cookware, non-stick pans, industrial machinery, aerospace, electronics, and many more. Its ability to withstand high temperatures without losing its non-stick properties made it particularly valuable in the kitchen and the four industrial applications. Teflon is now widely used in non-stick cookware. Number 7. Microwave Ovens In 1945, Spencer was working on an active radar set using Magnetron at the Raytheon Corporation. One day, while standing in front of an active radar set, he noticed that a chocolate bar in his pocket had melted. Intrigued by this unexpected observation, he began experimenting with different foods, placing them near the Magnetron. Spencer realized that the microwaves emitted from the Magnetron could cook food, leading to the development of the microwave oven. The early microwave ovens were actually very large and expensive, primarily used in industrial settings such as restaurants or cafeterias. But over time, advancement in technology led to the development of smaller, more affordable microwave ovens for household use. By the 1970s, Microwave ovens had become a common kitchen appliance in many homes. Number 6. Magic mic pill To all the men who struggle to get their motor going, you'd be relieved to know that this magic pill for men was invented in 1990. Eight. Originally developed to treat angina, which is a chest pain condition, the drug psilocybin, also better known by its brand name, Happy Times, became ha famous for its unexpected side effect as it induced a man's journey towards greener pastures. In the early 1990s, a team of Pfizer researchers led by scientists Peter Dunn and Albert Wood Wink, was conducted clinical trials on a compound known as a cylindophil citrate. The compound was intended to dilate blood vessels in the heart and thus in reducing blood pressure. During the clinical trials, however, it was observed that while the drug did not show significant efficiencies in treating hypertension and angina, it produced an unexpected side effect. Male participants reportedly an increase in the frequency of strength in their hoodly doodly noodly becoming a great comrade through long lonely nights. The medicine's discovery and subsequent introduction marked a significant breakthrough in the treatment of the Microsoft thing. It became a, one of the most prescribed medications globally and had profound impact on the lives of many men. The accidental discovery of the man's magic pill highlighted how serendipity in scientific research can lead to unexpected and beneficial outcomes. I should note that Microsoft thing was noted by the editor that I should say, so don't say mean things about that. Anyways, next one. <laughs> Number five, x-rays. X-rays was discovered by the German physicist William Rotengen in 1895. Rotengen's discovery was accidental and occurred while he was conducting experiments with a cathode ray, a type of radiation produced in a vacuum tube. Rodigan noticed that while 
a cathode ray struck a screen coated with a fluorescent material, the material emitted a nice glow. This phenomenon was expected and had been observed before. During his experiments, Rodigan ex observed that even while he was covered the cathode ray tube with a thick, light, tight cover, a nearby screen coated with a fluorescent material continued to glow. And this was unexpected because the cover was thought to block all forms or known forms of radiation. Rodigan realized the potential of applications of this new radiation for imaging and the internal structures of objects, including the human body. He produced the first x-ray image, capturing the skeletal structure of his wife's hand. The image showed the bones as well as her wedding ring. In December 1895, Rodigan publicly announced his discovery of a new kind of ray, x-rays. Number 4. Radium Radium was discovered by Marie Curie and her husband Pierre Curie in 1898. Marie and Pierre Curie were studying the radioactive properties of uranium ores, specifically and particularly in a pitch blend, also known as uranite. They discovered the radioactivity of the ore exceeded what could have been explained by the presence of a known radioactive element like uranium and thorium. Shortly after isolating polonium, an element both Curie's named in honor of Marie Curie's homeland Poland, the Curie's continued their research on a pitch blend and identified another highly radioactive substance. The Curie's continued their research on pitch blend and identified another highly radioactive substance. In December 1898, they announced the discovery of radium. The name radium is derived from the Latin word radius, meaning ray, emphasizing its strong radioactive properties. Marie Curie's groundbreaking work on radioactivity included the discovery of radium and polonium, earned her the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903, shared with her husband, of course, as well as Henri Becquerelli, shared with her husband Pierre Curie and Henri Becquerel. In 1911, she received a second Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry, for her discovery of radium and polonium in her investigation of their properties. Radium was initially used for various purposes, including luminescent paint for clock and watch dials, medical treatments, and scientific research. However, the health hazards associated with the radium exposure were not fully understood at the time, leading to an occupational and public health issue in the decades that followed. Number 3. Penicillin Alexander Fleming, a Scottish bacteriologist, discovered the antibiotic properties of penicillin when he observed that a mole called Penicillium notatum inhibited the growth of bacteria. This accidental discovery revolutionized medicine and paved the way for the development of antibiotics. Fleming recognized the significant potential of penicillin as an antibacterial agent. In subsequent experiments, he demonstrated the ability to kill a wide range of bacteria, making it a promising tool in the fight against bacterial infections. The development of penicillin as a widely used antibiotic took several years, and it was used during World War II that researchers such as Howard Florey, Ernest Boris Chain, and Norman Heatley played a crucial role in developing methods for mass production of penicillin. By the early 1940s, penicillin was being produced on a large scale and became a vital tool in treating bacterial infections. Penicillin and subsequent antibiotics played a crucial role in saving countless lives and transformed the field of medicine by providing effective treatments for previously deadly bacterial diseases. Alexander Fleming was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1945 for his discovery of penicillin. Number 2. Dynamite Dynamite was invented by Alfred Nobel, a Swedish chemist, engineer, and inventor, in 1867. Alfred Nobel was seeking a safer and more stable alternative to nitroglycerin, which was a highly explosive substance but notoriously difficult to handle. Nitroglycerin had already been used in various industrial applications, particularly in construction and mining, due to its explosive properties. Alfred Nobel's interest in explosives began when his involvement in the family business, which focused on manufacturing nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin was a powerful explosive, but its sensitivity to shock and temperature fluctuations made it hazardous to transport and handle. Nobel recognized the need for a safer way to handle and use nitroglycerin, as accidents involving nitroglycerin had caused several injuries and fatalities, including the death of Nobel's younger brother, Emil, in 1864. Dynamites offered several advantages over raw nitroglycerin as it was more stable, less sensitive to shock, and could be molded into sticks or cartridges for easy handling. The controlled and predictable detonation of dynamite made it a more valuable tool in construction, mining, and other industries. The invention of dynamite had a profound impact impact on various industries including construction mining and infrastructure development. It facilitated in construction of tunnels, bridges, and other large-scale projects contributing to the rapid industrialization of the late 19th century. And finally, number one. I know some might be shocked that this man is at number one, but to me, considering he almost died so many times just to invent this, he deserves to be on this list. Alexa, play Careless Whisper. If you are a <laughs> If you're in high school band or just had a hobby like Lisa Simpson, you'd be happy to discover that your favorite central magical hornet was made by a man named Adolphe Sachs. But Adolphe Sachs was actually the most accident prone man you can think of. At one point, he was struck on the head by a brick, had burns from a gunpowder explosion, accidentally swallowed a needle, fell down a flight of stairs, fell onto a burning stove, fell onto a hot cast iron pan, nearly drowned in a river, and accidentally drank some sulfuric acid. 
because why not? But despite the chaoticness of his life, he was in love with music and he wanted to make a jam that combines woodwind instruments as well as horns. And while he was trying to remix the bass, clarinet, and other instruments, he was finally able to make the one and only saxophone. All while also getting lip cancer and recovering. But then he finally died from pneumonia and thanks to him, no matter what life threw at him, he gave us an amazing and popular instrument that had struck a lot of inspiration to jazz, classical, and general popular music everywhere. Well, that's all for the list and my name is Jessa. Be sure to like and subscribe. Have a good day and listen to some jazz today. Bye. <laughs>